tinnitus or louder. I don't know what. Call to order the uh, public hearing. Um, I guess I could read the whole thing. To consider contributing 25% of the total costs up to a maximum of $50,000 to allow certain durable interior improvements and renovations at Gurney Mills and the Chicago Wood Fire Pizza Restaurant, tenant space necessary to prepare the space for a restaurant offering Mexican cuisine. Uh, roll call, please. Thorstenson. Here. Woodside. Here. Ross. Here. Garner. Here. O'Brien. Present. Balmans. Present. Six present. Yeah, so Ellen's gonna walk us through this, give us a quick summary, and then we have representatives from both Gurney Mills um, and uh, Kyan Enterprises here to uh, speak to the board. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Mayor. The project before you this evening pairs up two of Gurney's preeminent business partners, Gurney Mills Shopping Center and Kyan Enterprises. Gurney Mills at 2 million square feet, 200 stores and restaurants, is a giant in its industry. Kyan Enterprises, a 40-year-old brand uh, based in the area, uh, pioneering multiple restaurant concepts, multiple brands, including Birch Beverages, uh, is, is a giant in its industry. So in their own right, they're, they're fantastic, and bringing them together is a wonderful opportunity of what I think is kind of uniquely Gurney in that we have business partners, large and small, that collaborate to bring new amenities that our residents and our visitors enjoy. So over the years, as you know, Gurney Mills has regularly invested in the center, uh, modernizing and renovating, reimagining and repurposing retail space at a time when, frankly, a lot of their competitors are eliminating retail space. So Gurney Mill's diligent approach in this regard has enabled our mall to maintain low turnover, fill vacancies quickly on the rare occasions when they do arise, and maintain a vibrant mix of uses. This enhances the competitive status of Gurney Mills both within the Simon organization and within the retail marketplace. So recent example, let's pop back to that. These recent examples, as you probably, they're, they're sort of familiar um, at Green Mills, include build out of a portion of the former Sears Grand space for a 55,000 square foot Hobby Lobby. Uh, $6 million common area renovation, which led directly to lease commitments by Dick's Sporting Goods and other tenants. A fairly complex technical build out of the four Alpha Media radio stations. And prior to that, uh, the development of a pad site for Portillo's. Through these types of efforts, Gurney Mills, Illinois' third largest mall, and I believe its largest value, what's the proper term, Randy? Mm -hmm. Hybrid. <laughs> All good stuff. <laughs> uh, third largest overall, and, and, and largest in that particular category, which, you know, by, Gurney Mills has sort of been unique in that they have, a, they have uh, debuted a hybrid model, um, which has the full-line Macy's, many full-line stores, but of course many value-oriented, what used to be known as you know, outlet malls, and Gurney Mills pairs them both together and has branded them with this name that Randy and I are struggling to come up with. Um, but this is how they remain a thriving destination with a mix of those types of uses. The Chicago wood fire tenant space, you know, you might have noticed that whenever there's a vacancy, which is rare, um, it's viewed as an opportunity. Um, so this is not a vacancy, but this is a lease that expired in December, presenting an opportunity to retheme a really anchor, prominent, visible space with a concept which is complementary to the regional mall location. Probably many of you have been to Mexican cuisine restaurants in regional malls, and it's, I think, a really, really good fit for this type of setting. So Kyatt Enterprises has proposed, and Simon and Gurney Mills have agreed, um, that a Mexican-themed restaurant to be named Lola's Tacos and Tequila will re-energize this space. Uh, the anticipated sales tax and food and beverage tax from this location um, will be sufficiently offsetting the village's contribution uh, easily within four years. So Lola's, um, and certainly the members of the Kayat family can tell you more about it, um, but Lola's would propose to offer an authentic Mexican salad bar, fresh ingredient margaritas, signature cocktails, a variety of Mexican beers and sodas, and mariachi bands providing weekend entertainment. In this era of changing retail, uh, being nimble and forward-looking is critical. Uh, the opportunity re to repurpose this restaurant tenant space with an existing tenant who knows the clientele of the community, knows the clientele of the mall, knows how to create a concept that is fresh and new and fits its environment, um, is going to pos position this one to be very successful. Doesn't, help, doesn't hurt at all that it happens to be a well-beloved local business that also has really good name recognition and regional draw. 
So in order to move forward with this, um, with the durable improvements associated with the Lobos build out, the Mills is requesting Village Assistance to fund a portion of those durable improvements, which includes storefront signage, interior finishes, lighting, electric, plumbing, and general project development and finance fees and costs. Of the $200,000 estimated for that portion, the capital portion of the project, which is actually just one piece, it's part of a larger project budget that approximate, or approaches $300,000, um, we're just being asked to focus on the capital portion of it. And in keeping with our prior Simon uh, contract templates, our portion is limited to a percentage. In this case, it's 25% up to a maximum of $50,000. And in the event that those construction reimbursable expenditures come in less than estimated, our, our portion would be reduced proportionally. So um, this is very much in keeping with the structure of prior agreements. Um, with work on the space, I think getting ready to start, maybe it already has, I've seen some wonderful looking plans, getting started and really rolling in April. Um, this restaurant will debut just in time for the summer tourism season and the outdoor dining that our visitors and residents really enjoy during that season. Um, it's anticipated to be an excellent fit for Gurney Mills. Uh, our residents and visitors appreciate the authentic, unique, fun, concepts in, in this regional setting. So with that, um, that very brief overview, this item is ready for your consideration, but prior to that, we do have members of the Kyatt family, as well as General Manager Randy Ibertowski, as Pat mentioned, to provide a little bit more um, interesting detail regarding the concept and background as to how it impacts and helps uh, Green Mills thrive. So who do we get, Palmer, Nikki, <laughs> Elliot, or Christian? Which is our pick here? We get all of them. All right. Do you want to? Okay. Actually, for a public hearing, we just ask you to be sworn in. So. Oh. If anybody's going to give uh, comments or testimony, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go public, but if there were, this is the time I'd ask everybody to raise their hand. We're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for having us. My name is Nicole Kyatt. Um, I am the president of Kyatt Enterprises. My wonderful family um, is here with us. As you mentioned, Palmer's here, um, who is, her nickname is Lola, because whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. So, <laughs> and here we are. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Ellen, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Um, you did us a great justice. If you weren't doing such a good job in your position here, we would definitely steal you. Thank you. She's not available. <laughs> I hear that often. Um, can I answer any immediate questions? How soon? How soon? Um, we are hoping, we're hoping for a two-week turnover. We'd like to close on April 18th and then reopen on May 1st, which gives us four days before the holiday, uh, which would be Cinco de Mayo, which we're hoping to be open for. Do you have any questions for Nikki? seems like, oh, go ahead. It wouldn't, you, Ryan. wouldn't be wrong if I asked, did you happen to bring any of the dessert page? <laughs> <laughs> um, we can arrange for that. We will have a tasting day, which you guys are obviously top of the guest list for. Um, or we can do a private tasting. We can bring it right back here next week. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Parsonson. You know, um, being confronted with the menus did distract me. So when you talked about the patio or outdoor dining, I'm really thrilled that you'll be able to enhance that because obviously that's what we all want more of. So that's terrific. Absolutely, thank you. Well, and if 2020 showed us anything, we had to figure out how to operate outside. Uh, and Randy and his team were so gracious to approve that for us in our original concept. So we're definitely going to put a huge focus on that uh, for the summer of 2023. Right to my left, questions or comments? Thanks, Nikki. Thank you Appreciate very much. Uh, Randy, would you like to talk? Just real quick, I'm here just to support the Kayats and uh, just want to say the it's extremely important for the mall to have continued to have multiple and viable restaurant options for our customers. Studies show people stay longer, they spend more money, they're happier when they have good restaurants that they can partake of. And I think we all know the Kayats do things top notch. And both with Chicago Wood Fire Pizza and with this new concept, Lola's, we're, we could not be more thrilled about uh, uh, getting in and, and having some lunch and some dinner. So um, with that, again, I'm just here to show my support. 
Thanks, Randy. Um, anybody have any comments or no? So is there a motion to recommend this to the? Uh, so moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Ross, second by Trustee Thorstenson. Roll call, please. Thorstenson. Yes. Woodside. Aye. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Motion carries, so it's recommended to the, actually goes to the uh, full board meeting, um, which will be start at seven, seven o'clock. So sometime during that time, and then at that point we'll vote again. And since it's the same people voting, likely to go well. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Motion to adjourn. So moved. By Trustee O'Brien. Second. Seconded by Trustee Garner. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned until 7. Call to order the Gurney Village Board meeting, regular meeting of March 20th, 2023. Roll call, please. Thorstenson. Here. Woodside. Here. Ross. Here. Garner. Here. O'Brien. Present. Balmas. Present. Looks present. you all stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag. everyone. Uh, we'll start with the uh, approval of the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Motion second. by Trustee Balmas, second by Trustee Garner. Roll call, please. Thorstenson. Yes. Woodside. Aye. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Six aye. Motion carries. Pat. Item number one, approval of the minutes from the March 6, 2023 meeting. Item number two, approval of ordinance 2023-16 authorizing and approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Third Lake and the Village of Gurney, Lake County, Illinois, for the sharing of costs for signalization upgrades at Illinois Route 45 and Grant Avenue Data Drive. Item number three, approval of resolution 2023-01, reallocating 2023 volume cap to the Village of Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Item number four, approval of resolution 2023-02, authorizing maintenance and improvements of streets and highways under Illinois Highway Code, 2023 motor fuel tax program. Item number five, approval of request from Public Works Department to purchase 10 fire hydrant assemblies from the low bidder Zybel Water Service Products at a cost of $50,465.58. Item number six, approval of request from administration and Public Works Departments to renew a janitorial contract with Alpha Building Maintenance Services for a period of one year at a total cost of $40,032.00. Item number seven, approval of fire department recommendation to purchase furniture for the fire station number one bunk room remodel from KI at a cost of $27,473.00. Item number eight, approval of request to allow econ economic development director Ellen Dean to attend the Innovating Commerce Serving Communities Real Re Retail Real Estate Convention in Las Vegas, Nevada from May 21st to the 23rd, 2023 at a cost not to exceed $2,200. Item number nine, approval of setting a bid date of May 1st, 2023 for 2023 road reconstruction project. Item number 10, approval, approval of payroll for period ending March 10, 2023 in the amount of $946,205.95. Item number 11, approval of bills for period ending March 20th, 2023 in the amount of $2,565,812.10. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. moved. Motion by Trustee O'Brien, second by Trustee Garner. Roll call, please. Thorstenson. Yes. Woodside. Aye. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Six aye. Motion carries. On two petitions and communications. Uh, the first item is the approval of proclamation designating April as Fair Housing Month in the Village of Gurney. <clears throat> April 11th, 2023 marks the 55th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act. Uh, which guarantees equal housing opportunities for all citizens. Therefore, April is acknowledged as Fair Housing Month and recognizes the importance of fair housing laws and programs in eliminating discrimination and ensuring that individuals in Illinois 
can choose where to live without being discriminated against based on their race, color, religion, age, gender, mar gender marital status, national origin, and or disability. It is also important to recognize the role of fair housing groups and other organizations in promoting and preserving equal opportunity. Now therefore, I, Thomas B. Hood, Mayor of Gurney, do hereby proclaim April 2023 as Fair Housing Month in the Village of Gurney and encourage all residents, businesses, and organizations to promote and preserve equal housing opportunities for all. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee O'Brien, second by Trustee Thorsonson. All in favor say aye. 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 On to the next proclamation. Approval of proclamation designating April as 911 Education Month in the Village of Gurney. Uh, the Village of Gurney joins with national public safety leaders to promote 911 awareness and proper usage. The Village of Gurney begins a month-long campaign in April to begin or to help Americans of all ages recognize the importance of 911 and the role they play in ensuring effective and efficient emergency response in times of crisis. Groups include the United States Congress and the National Emergency Number Association, a leading public safety association, have also recognized April as National 911 Education Month and are encouraging the media, the 911 community, the wireless industry, and public information providers to engage in 911 awareness and education activities this month. Now, therefore, I, Thomas Hood, Mayor of Gurney, do hereby proclaim April 2023 as 911 Education Month in the Village of Gurney. I call upon all parents, teachers, school administrators, caregivers, and residents to observe this month with appropriate training events and activities. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Garner. Second. Second by Trustee Thorsonson. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> On to the final proclamation. Approval proclamation designating April as Child Abuse Prevention Month and recognizing the Blue Kids Lake County Project. During the month of April, we recognize National Child Abuse Prevention Month and the importance of communities working together to help families thrive and prevent child maltreatment. Throughout the year, communities are encouraged to increase awareness about <laughs> child and family well-being and work together to implement effective strategies that support families and prevent child abuse. Further, I'd like to recognize Lake County Children's Advocacy Center Blue Kids program for encouraging our local businesses, schools, and communities to have conversations about child abuse in Lake County, engaging people to speak up, and creating public awareness. Uh, now, therefore, I, Thomas Hood, Mayor of Gurney, do hereby proclaim April 2023 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the Village of Gurney. I call upon and encourage all residents to join in dedicating their energies to cherishing our children and helping them grow and develop free from physical, emotional, and sexual harm. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Motion by several people. <laughs> um, Trustee O'Brien, second by Trustee Ross. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Last is a reminder that we have a budget hearing at 6.40 p.m. Uh, April 10th. Yeah, and then just one other reminder, we will have a committee of the whole meeting uh, on Monday. Maureen Reedy from Visit Lake County will be here uh, with Randy, uh, Great Wolf, and Six Flags. And then Brian will also have a third quarter financial um, report. So. All right, thanks, Pat. Uh, so on the reports, uh, we have a presentation by District 50 Superintendent Dr. Robert Maycheck, uh, Woodland School District 50 update. Uh, Dr. Maycheck, and as this is part of... Uh, I think as Pat thought, I, I thought I'd do this brilliant thing of inviting all these people to come speak to us, and I didn't realize I was going to get return invites that I'd have to go speak to all of them. So uh, it's time for a little payback, right, Dr. Maycheck? So uh, as some might know, I mean, for us, uh, Woodland is the largest, dist largest district in town, uh, and uh, we have a great relationship with them. We look forward to everything from uh, participating in their events to our SROs uh, working with them as well. So I really appreciate our relationship. And um, this is year number two as superintendent. Is that right? Year one. Okay. You were there before that. So just appreciate working um, with uh, Dr. Maycheck and his professionalism and his desire to work with us. Uh, it's been uh, a great ride so far. So I look forward to hearing uh, as to what's going on with District 50. Um, thank you, Mayor Hood, and, and good evening to uh, members of the board. Um, thank you for this opportunity to share a little bit about Woodland with you. Um, we were uh, grateful to have uh, Mayor Hood at our board meeting last month and uh, just to hear an update on all the great things that are happening in the village under uh, his leadership. So thank you for that. Um, this is my first year as a superintendent at Woodland, 
and uh, following some pretty big footsteps of Dr. K uh, Lori Casey, um, I just want to say on a personal note um, how much I've really appreciated not only members of the board um, and village administration, and that goes for everyone from the mayor's office to the police and uh, fire and some of our community groups, um, the welcome that I've received. It was really difficult to leave my previous district after eight years in uh, Evergreen Park. And um, I'm grateful every day that I made that choice. And uh, I love my job and I love this community uh, and I, I love the people that I'm, I'm allowed to work with every day. So thank you. And really that's uh, when you talk about it being a great ride. Um, thank you for that because I see it that way too. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about um, the relationships that we're working on uh, cultivating and growing within our village and that's really the, the focus of my presentation. Um, so I'm not quite sure exactly what you're looking for but certainly if there's any questions or something that you wanted to hear about that I haven't shared, please. Um, so um, that is, this is our vision statement and um, you know school districts have a vision and a mission and our, our mission which I, I also won't read to you but part of our mission statement talks about doing all these great things for kids uh, under the uh, parameters of a, of a nurturing community. And when I think about uh, the kind of community that I want for our kids at Woodland, it's not just the teaching and learning that goes on in our four schools, which I think is exceptional, but this village is really an extension of our classrooms and the opportunities that our children have been given and that our staff have been given are just amazing. And um, I, I can tell you as someone who's been around a while, are really um, somewhat unique in, in education. Um, you know, the partnerships that, that um, people in the village have sought out and then have been open to me pursuing with them um, have been nothing short of incredible. And I'm, again, I, I remain really grateful for that. Um, Woodland at a glance, as you mentioned, it's the largest district in Lake County. We encompass 33 miles and we have students who come from seven different zip codes. And you can see all the, the data there. Um, where this is, interesting, particularly the last few uh, weeks of, of weather we've had, is when we have to make a decision, for example, something like an Oculus says, is there enough snow to close school? I can't just look at what's happening here. I mean, we have 50 staff members who live in Kenosha and Racine. And so even when it's okay here and our village and uh, Moore and Township is doing a great job of plowing the roads, I have to get weather reports from Racine in Kenosha County to see if I've got teachers who can get in here to teach the kids even though our kids can get here. So it's not as simple. Um, the Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when we were supposed to get 50 mile an hour winds and all, like 20 inches of snow became 10, became four. Um, I had at least five people had the same great idea to send me pictures of their green grass on their lawn saying, <laughs> saying thank you for calling an e-learning day because there's no snow. And so uh, you know, you do the best you can to keep everybody safe. Um, so I, I erred on the side of caution. But again, with all these parameters, it's not just Gurney that, that we have to take a look at. Um, the other part that why this, why this graphic is important is because when we're talking about trying to meet the needs of every child, certainly the needs of um, children across the Woodland community are different than just the needs of, of the kids in Gurney. I mean, when you look at uh, student, uh, students coming from Waukegan, coming from Park City, coming from Lindenhurst, coming from Gurney, um, coming from a variety of cultures, a variety of backgrounds. It's very much a, a heterogeneous group of students, which is a real strength for us, but it also presents some challenges in trying to meet so many dispar disparate and different needs, um, you know, within the same classroom of, of 19 or 20 children. Um, in terms of, of who our kids are, um, you can see that our, um, you know, we, we don't have a majority student group, which again, we see as a real strength, but in terms of programming, uh, we are requ that requires us to be able to offer uh, a number of English language support classes that perhaps a smaller district or a more homogenous group um, you know, d doesn't, doesn't have to worry about. The fact that we are so spread out, um, virtually all of our students are bused. And so again, um, that creates challenges with uh, traffic, as we, I'm sure you all know, but our three-tiered system, you know, certainly impacts our, our start times and end times of, of the school day at all four campuses. Um, and the fact that um, when you're trying to make connections between school and home, the fact that we have 45 languages besides English spoken at home, um, again, is a real opportunity for us, but also creates some communication challenges. Um, so when we get into our uh, community partnerships, 
This, of course, is Kelly Hansen. Kelly, Detective Hansen, is our school resource officer. And uh, I am really grateful um, for the uh, partnership with the Gurney Police Department and uh, Chief Smith and Deputy Chief Gullen and uh, the entire group of, uh, of officers uh, at, at the police department and also the, the Gurney um, Fire Department. And um, besides helping us keep our students safe and monitoring our lockdown drills for us and all of our safety drills, um, Detective Hansen has brought a different um, approach to the SRO position. And I, I've got a couple of slides later on where she's taken some of the things that she's done in her previous roles as an officer within the community. For example, um, writing um, uh, holiday cards for seniors. And that's turned into a service learning project for our kids at the middle school. So there is a lot of, there have been a, a number of unintended um, benefits to having Detective Hansen with us besides uh, kind of a traditional role of a, of a school resource officer. But um, very grateful. Um, the Gurney Police Department and Detective Hansen were instrumental. For example, we put together a community uh, safety seminar last October on everything from the dangers of vaping to, um, you know, one of our one of our area SROs talked about the, uh, you know, just the, the horrible things that, that people were, were putting into candy. And it was really timely because it was right around Halloween. So it was a good, uh, you know, warning message for, for, for parents. Um, very proud to represent Woodland at our Gurney Exchange Club. Here's a couple of pictures of our crew, our uh, Woodland crew, and there's administrators as well as some board members on the left. And there's me, I'm sure that is a uh, soda that I'm serving to the officers on the right. Uh, but uh, so the Gurney Exchange Club has been a wonderful opportunity. Um, I've never been part of, of a, an organization like the Exchange Club. Um, and I'm really grateful for the philanthropy uh, to our community. And um, uh, just the, the like-minded like people getting together every month uh, to try to make things better in our community. This is, um, we receive flags for all of our schools from our legislators through the Exchange Club. And then we have one of our students, so that's Andrew uh, Soler, who was recognized as one of our uh, students of the month. That was actually on uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, our Lake County Regional Office of Education has been another great partner for us. And Dr. Carner, who's the second on the right, uh, has been a wonderful resource for us. Um, he's opened the door for us to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, partner with the College of Lake County. And uh, this picture is from a safety summit that the Lake County ROE sponsored for all Lake County districts in uh, July. We had um, um, uh, the Attorney General spoke and a number of school security uh, folks uh, from out of town came in and talked about ways to kind of start the year uh, from a safety standpoint. Um, the, one of the things I'm proud of and would like to make a plug for tonight is our parent mentoring program. Uh, we are the, the, we were the first school district in Lake County to work with the ROE on this particular grant. In the uh, picture on the left, you can see representative of Favor Diaz, second from the left, and then second from the right is, of course, um, Joyce Mason. So that was just last Friday they came in to see how we we're doing our program, and then on the right are some of our mentors. We have seven parent mentors through this grant, um, three at uh, primary school and four at elementary. We could have 20, but the grant only allows us to have eight. So, so Bob, before, uh, you, before you move from there, I think Greg wants to brag about his wife on the left. So. <laughs> Is that true? Call me out. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to call. Be my wife. She's on the left. <laughs> oh, is, are you are you uh, Lavanda's husband? <laughs> okay. It, it all depends. <laughs> <laughs> She's been amazing, Mr. Garner. Thank you. I lost my hair on the deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine was dark when I got married, and now you can see what's happened to me. So I, it's all been worth it, though. I'm sure. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, Lavanda Garner and Tanya Abbey are parent volunteers, and that was a component of the grant that we had to have parents. Uh, and volunteers run this program, and they have done an amazing job. Uh, they will actually be presenting on uh, Thursday night at our uh, district board meeting about the successes of that program. Uh, you mentioned one of your proclamations, Mayor, the Children's Advocacy Center. Uh, this, of course, is Carrie Flanagan, who directs the center. Um, Carrie has been an amazing friend to District 50. On the picture on the left, she actually spoke to our administrators um, back in August and our opening day because our focus was like, these are the kids who are coming to us next week. And you know, we need to understand they're not all coming from the same homes, from the same backgrounds, from the same cultures. And so the Advocacy Center has played a really important role in helping us understand the, um, 
the, the life of kids outside of school and, and, and sadly how to make some really uh, troubling times for our children a little bit better and Carrie and her team has done an amazing job. Uh, we were allowed to tour the facility um, back in September on that's so that's on the right and actually as a result of that tour one of our administrators actually signed up and has been volunteering um, at the center so um, you know it's ha again had some very nice unintended um, consequences in a, in a good way. Um, of course, that's Adam Krieger from Warren Township Youth and Family Services. <coughs> uh, Adam has been amazing, and Adam was really uh, instrumental in putting together that uh, community safety seminar that I mentioned back in October. Um, through his, um, we have monthly meetings um, with all the, the community groups in um, in the, the uh, township, and uh, he's always willing to to uh, share his knowledge, his information with us. He runs a number of parent. Uh, panels both in person and via Zoom that uh, our parents look forward to. The picture on the right, he would, he presented to our administration on the services that uh, the Youth and Family Services could provide. And that conversation led to a pilot that we're going to be starting, which he will be at our board meeting on Thursday to talk about. And that is um, his group is going to be able to provide uh, counseling services to some of our middle school students while they're in school. And so once a week, um, someone from Warren Township Youth and Family Services will come to Warren, uh, to uh, Woodland Middle School. And we've got children who um, could use someone to talk to, <clears throat> but either their parents are working or they can't get transportation at night or outside of school hours. So um, they're willing to come to school to provide those services and we're gonna pilot that program uh, this spring. And of course, uh, Ryan Livergood at Warren Newport Public Library. So on the left, we, we participated in a uh, back to school backpack giveaway program on a Saturday morning in August. And um, it started at 10 o'clock and by 10.30, the library was out of backpacks. And that, that's how popular the, this event was. And uh, uh, Ryan has been a, a wonderful friend to District 50 and the library has been such a great support for us. Um, the two pictures on the right, I'm really proud of because um, the library extended an offer to Woodland to display uh, our students' artwork during Black History Month. And so, well, uh, for obvious reasons, we can't have our schools open to the public during our school day, um, but uh, patrons of the library were able to come in every day and look at our students' wonderful artwork. And so we're really grateful for having this, uh, the opportunity to share uh, our art with the uh, community through the library. Um, Rotary Club of Gurney is another great organization. And um, when I was talking to Brooke Hexstrom, our communications person, about this slide, she said, well, why don't you crop the tweet, but uh, just leave the picture. And I thought, well, you know, this is a great opportunity to sort of uh, sell my uh, Twitter account. So um, you can follow me at, uh, at Robert Maycheck, and that's my uh, uh, District 50 Twitter account. But um, we put a lot of community um, news and community uh, connections on our, on our administrator Twitter accounts as well as our district Twitter. Um, this one was uh, our, our primary school was trying to raise $10,000 for a great program called All Kids Bike. And um, the Rotary donated uh, $3,500 to us. And then we actually were able to have a, uh, we incorporated a bicycle, not only a bicycle riding unit in our uh, primary curriculum for fitness, but then also incorporated bicycle safety and, and wearing helmets and that got into what happens when you come to an intersection or to a railroad crossing, and it's turned into a really wonderful uh, unit, um, thanks in large part to the Rotary Club. Uh, Gurney Park District, of course, uh, we have a great relationship with them. Not only do a number of our children use their uh, programs before and after school uh, for, for childcare and uh, to hang out socially, but then they also use our middle school uh, for, a very, uh, for a thriving um, um, inter intramural sports program. So, uh, we're thrilled about that and hoping to grow our relationship with the park district. One of the pieces of our strategic plan is going to be to see how our community partners could benefit from some of the resources that Woodland might offer um, outside of traditional school hours and in, in the summertime and on weekends. So there's uh, Mayor Hood who's been awesome. Uh, you can see, so just going clockwise on the left, Mayor Hood participated in our strategic planning process. So thank you for that, for giving up an evening to do that. On the right, I had mentioned the uh, holiday cards uh, program that Detective Hansen brought to us. And um, there was the mayor with some of our middle school students delivering cards to one of our area uh, senior centers. 
And then on the lower right is uh, the mayor meeting with our parent mentoring group at the elementary school. And then there's on the bottom left is our um, Board of Education and Mayor Hood's uh, presentation to that group uh, just a few weeks ago. So other partnerships that we're growing as well, I mentioned the CLC partnership with, um, through the ROE. One of the things I'm really proud of is that um, last year we started an ESL program specifically for the parents of our bilingual students who are in our EL program. So while our students are learning how to speak English during the school day, their parents uh, through a grant with CLC can come and learn how to speak English at night. And we have, we're currently offering three classes, which is a, um, we offered two last year. This year we're offering GED. We're also offering a, uh, an English as a second language class. And then we're finally we're offering a computer class. Uh, so how to build some technical and career skills. And that's at our intermediate school. It's been a real um, village affair. So we've got students from Warren High School who come and uh, supervise kids. So their childcare is an issue. Um, we've got uh, uh, responsible teenagers watching the little ones while mom and dad are in class, uh, which has been great all the way around. And they're in our building, they're in intermediate school three nights a week. And then we have uh, University of Illinois. Uh, we, were, we were one of the first schools in uh, Lake County to sign up uh, when we came back from the pandemic for shield testing, which is the PCR saliva test. And we've had a great relationship with the U of I in that regard. When we first came back, we were uh, collecting more than 4,000 samples per week, and that's students and staff. And it really allowed us uh, to help keep our schools open at a time when other schools were concerned or we were opening and then they're pulling back and then they're, we're masking and we're not masking. But the shield testing has been such a great resource, a free resource to our community and it's been totally optional and voluntary. Uh, so no one's forced to do it and it's non-invasive and we still do it. So two years in, uh, but we've gone from 4,000 tests to now we do about 1,500 a week, which is still to me a lot, but uh, it's still a great uh, peace of mind for parents. You know, you've got, kids got a, a sniffle or a cough and is that a cold or are you getting the COVID? And so they can test, we have a testing four days a week in every one of our schools and that's for students and staff. Uh, it's just been a great, uh, great resource uh, to, to be able to offer. Um, the uh, newest thing with U of I is that uh, about this time about a year ago, schools were encouraged to try to partner with community groups to offer a, um, to try to write a stop grant, a school safety grant. And I know we partnered with, um, with the uh, police department and we, we wrote a request which uh, was not accepted, but we also wrote one with our U of I partners and that request was for mental health services and that one was accepted. So we're actually going to start uh, collecting data and the gist of this grant is to look at the kinds of behavior um, or disciplinary referrals that kids at, in, at all of our schools are receiving and which one of them are, which of them are grounded in, um, you know, SEL type issues. So couldn't get along with somebody or interpersonal, uh, some kind of, of, of um, conflict. And then the U, um, U of I will make some recommendations and then the grant will help us uh, implement the recommendations that uh, are recommended through this uh, year long uh, study. So we're really excited about that. Uh, other partnerships, Latino Literacy Project, we have a, Latino Literacy Project is a national program that we train teachers to train parents how to read with their children. And what's really cool is that um, part of the, the grant that we use to, to fund this program um, buys books. So you've got families who otherwise maybe wouldn't have a, a home library for their kids, but through this program, Every uh, class, they get a book, and not, not only do we teach strategies, um, how to do decoding and reading with the students, but then they get to take the books home. And one page is in Spanish, and one page is in English, so it's, it's bilingual, and it's a great resource, and it's been a very popular program. Um, Target on Grand Avenue and Gurney has been awesome to help us with our holiday food drive. Um, a year and a half ago, when we were still in uh, remote learning, we gave away uh, over 150 boxes of food and cars, cars came and, and pulled up and popped their trunk and we put the food in and they drove off. This past year we were able to offer this program uh, back in person at uh, the middle school, which my understanding is how we, we used to do it and we really set it up like a store and uh, Walmart donated uh, shopping carts so 
families could come in and actually shop uh, in our middle school uh, cafeteria. And um, we did about, uh, we had about 75 uh, uh, folks came in and so it was great to feed um, hungry families. And then finally our Veterans Day uh, programs at each of our schools, we, we, we love our, our community and I, I love the patriotism. Um, this was elementary school, so we had uh, aunts, uncles, moms, dads, grandmas, and grandpas, uh, older siblings who were active military came in and spent the entire day at elementary school and the kids could ask them questions and they talked about their branch of the military and what it was like to, you know, to be in active service. Um, all of our schools did something a little bit different. Our inter intermediate uh, building, for example, had a uh, a choral program of all patriotic songs, which was great to hear again, by the way. Um, and uh, we invited then our special guests were any family veterans, uh, and that was our audience. Uh, middle school took virtual tours of the, all the monuments in Washington, D.C., and then were able to read as part of that uh, assignment. They were able to read firsthand accounts of, uh, from here from men and women who fought in the various wars, the, the statues they were looking at. So it was, uh, it was very, a very moving day and I'm uh, very, very proud that we were able to offer that. Um, last piece uh, that I just wanted to mention, so our next, what's happening next at Woodland is um, we were just finishing up our strategic plan, which again, which uh, Mayor Hood was a part of. Um, so I love this quote because whenever change can be kind of scary, but it's also the only way really to, to move anything forward. So it's an opportunity for us to do something great. Um, I won't read these to you because I've probably overextended my time, but we have four priority areas. Uh, so finances, student support, and operations, and uh, education and academics. And so um, we are going to be talking about the strategic plan, and hopefully the board will be approving it on Thursday night. Uh, so as soon as they do, that will become public and be pushed out to our community. And. Um, Oh, the only other piece I want to mention about that, one of the key components to this plan is that we really looked at the entire plan through an equity lens. And so we did a lot of research and there was a, uh, there's a school district out, uh, outside of Seattle that did their entire plan uh, and, and decided saying, well, we're gonna do equity this year. They put uh, an equity, they, they use an equity or diversity lens through the entire plan and these are the six questions as we were coming up with goals and outcomes we asked ourselves or the committee asked itself these questions before we put anything on paper and so uh, what, it, what we ended up doing uh, the final uh, draft of, of the plan and this was a, a, a parent who, who worked with us but it's really about people it's about how do we engage students it's about how do we value and understand more about who's coming into our classrooms how do we support staff and what they need as professionals and um, coming out of, out of a year and a half pandemic? And uh, I, I think if someone knew, uh, we are so resource rich in Woodland. We have all the stuff we need. We've got the computers, we've got the space, we've got the books. Um, I'm really proud that we're focusing on people and really kind of brings me back to the start of my presentation, which is uh, this is just a really great community to be an educator in. Our kids are lucky. Our staff is lucky, I'm lucky as an administrator, and um, just uh, very grateful for all of your support. Any questions from the uh, board? I will. Trustee Bob. Just out of curiosity and something I've noticed in people's qu questions, is now District 50 one of the recipients of the um, revenue that's supposed to be generated from the new casino? Are, are the, you know, that, There's so been that, some discussion, but I, I don't know whether it's ever been. Well, originally we thought we were right now. My understanding, and it's probably people sitting next to you who know better than I, but my, my understanding is that there seems to be some disagreement about where the TIF, uh, the, the TIF area begins and ends and who, who is um, in line to get what. So right now, that's still up in the air. and I. If, if there was a firm figure, I couldn't tell you what it is because we're still not sure. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the non-answer, but no, I, that, that's where we are. I mean, I, I know it's been out there and yeah. I just didn't know whether that was ever finalized or anything like that. It has oh. not been. Thank you. Trustee Thorsonson. Hi, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, one other question, uh, since Jeannie asked hers that I didn't hear you talk about is, uh, what is your relationship with the Prairie Crossing funding? 
So Prairie Crossing uh, receives uh, six million dollars annually uh, from um, state funding that should go to Woodland students. And the our issue with Prairie Crossing is that elements of their charter are not being followed. For example, the fact that their demogra their student demographic is supposed to match Woodlands, and not only does it not match ours, it's almost completely upside down. And where that's a problem is that uh, the state has um, uh, given us additional dollars, and rightly so, to support students, for example, with special needs or who need additional um, uh, resources for language acquisition. And so that dollar figure is following children to Prairie and Crossing who don't have those needs, but they're still getting that money. So where we are, we continue to work with legislators. Um, Joyce Mason has been, we just, she was over on Friday, we were talking about it again. We're continuing to try to figure out an angle to take to get some relief. Um, you know, if not from the money that we're losing, that sh by, by rights should be going to our children. If we're not going to do that, then at least a way to maybe share some of the resources and some of the costs, um, which also is not happening. Again, I wish I had better news, but. Allow us to answer one more. Yeah. Money talks always. So uh, you made a lot of effort, the school district, in getting the, um, oh yeah, on the roofs. Solar, solar, solar panels. panels. How, how has that helped your economic stand? Um, or has it or not have it? Or how do you even justify? Or, well, so certainly the way that we're, uh, we're, we're, we're able to afford it is that the state has provided matching funds. Uh, the problem with that is that, of course, you have to find the money up front to, to put it in. Um, just today, we saw legislation, but not to, not to try to try to sidetrack the issue, but um, the state is certainly going in that direction. Uh, now there's a, um, a bill out there that by 2028, we're all supposed to have electric school buses, uh, which again, was just not funded uh, by, the, by any state uh, mandate. But um, my understanding of the whole solar project is that it would take between 15 and 20 years to sort of break even or to realize the savings. But, but that's the idea. Besides just being cleaner for the environment and a better steward of the envir environment and a better model for our kids, um, the economic uh, impact uh, of, of this project, I think, is a few years down the road still. Okay, thank you. Trustee Russ. How many school buses do you have? Uh, we probably have, I want to say about 80, 90, yes. And then th those are regular size, and then we have a fleet of special ed, smaller special ed buses. So probably about 30 of those. Thank you, Dr. Maycheck. Thank you, Mayor. For your time. Thanks. Thank you, folks. So on to uh, new business, uh, approval of ordinance 2023. Uh, 17. Approving a redevelopment agreement between the Village of Gurney and Wall at Gurney Mills LLC to renovate space currently occupied by Chicago Wood Fire Pizza Restaurant. Sure, so this was the topic of our public hearing and I'll have Ellen give a quick summary since she presented uh, the public hearing. Thank you. The proposal before the Village Board this evening is to enter into a redevelopment agreement that's consistent in format with many of our prior agreements with Simon. We always like to, when, we, when, there's, a, when there's a need, and, and the Mills has certainly invested in the mall over the years, keeping it fresh, reinvigorating tenant spaces, and that's why we still have a mall of 2 million square feet and 200 stores, as opposed to a mall that's redeveloping. So this is the, the proposal this evening is for an uh, uh, expired lease restaurant um, operated as Chicago Wood Fire Pizza um, for the village to, to participate to a level that's consistent with our prior agreements, 25% of the capital proposed capital improvement budget of $200,000. So in our case, a maximum of $50,000. We certainly anticipate that the revenues generated by the new, re the new restaurant will recoup that investment within easily within the first four years. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Move to approve. <coughs> Motion by Trustee Ross. Second. Second by Trustee O'Brien. Roll call, please. Thorstenson. Yes. Woodside. Aye. Ross. Aye. 
Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Aye. Thomas? Aye. Looks aye. Motion carries. Uh, item number two, approval of ordinance 2023. 18. Approving an intergovernmental agreement by and between the Village of Gurney and the Warren Waukegan Fire Protection District of Lake County, Illinois. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I had a memo from Chief Kavanaugh on this. Uh, it's an item that comes before the village board every three years or so. Uh, I've had a relationship with the fire protection district that goes back to the 1930s. Uh, the village provides um, obviously fire protection ambulance services for the district. First contract is from 77. Uh, the current agreement expires on April uh, 30th, 2023. So the chief's been working with uh, the district board members um, over the past couple months to review the agreement and update as needed. Uh, very few updates, uh, basically just change the uh, dates on it um, and the dollar amount. Um, district approved it at their meeting uh, last Wednesday night uh, with no issue, and it's before you uh, for consideration, three-year contract. Any questions or comments from the board? Is there a motion? So motion moved. Approved. Motion by Trustee Obama, second by Trustee O'Brien. Roll call, please. Orsonson. Yes. Woodside. Aye. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Thomas? Aye. Six aye. Motion carries. Uh, item number three, approval of ordinance 2023-19. Authorizing execution of a professional service agreement with Bollinger, Locke, and Associates, Inc. for engineering services for the 2023 water main improvements, Pat. Sure. So the next three items on the agenda are really related here. I had a memo from our village engineer, Nick Leach. Uh, as we've done in the past, we typically bring in uh, engineering consultants to assist with monitoring our capital improvement programs. This year's uh, the second largest on file. Uh, we've got $8.9 million scheduled in infrastructure investment, including six miles of roadway, half mile of uh, reconstruction uh, of roadways, and then water main replacement projects along Old Plain and then over near Granville and Waveland. So we have our four engineers um, that'll be um, on these projects. But again, additional assistance is needed. Uh, a couple years ago, we requested statements of qualifications, went through that process. Um, six firms uh, replied to that. So we have a list of firms um, to, to pick and choose from. Um, have worked with Bollinger and Locke um, in the past. I've been happy with their services. Uh, the same with item number five on the agenda uh, with IMEG. So uh, the first one is for uh, the water main improvement project with Bollinger and Locke, not to exceed $110,000. We don't expect to expend all that funding, so it should come in under uh, with each one of these. Uh, next one is Bollinger and Lock for the roadway reconstruction program, again, at $110,000 that we don't expect to spend at all. And the uh, third uh, professional services agreement is with IMEG, um, and that would be um, a floater position, um, wherever that position would be needed, whether it's water main, road construction, um, storm sewer, et cetera, and that's uh, not to exceed $130,000. So Nick had a, a detailed memo on it. You've seen uh, the different road, uh, roadways that we're uh, proposing uh, to resurface this upcoming year, along with uh, the water improvement projects. I think going back to January, we first started talking about them. Um, and Nick's here tonight if there's any uh, specific questions, but this is something we uh, consider every year. Any questions or comments from anybody? Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Garner. Second. Second by Trustee Thorstenson. Roll call, please. Thorstenson. Yes. Woodside. Aye. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Six aye. Motion carries. Uh, item number four, approval of ordinance 2023. 20. Authorizing execution of a professional services agreement with uh, Bollinger, Locke, and Associates for engineering services for the 2023 roadway construction reconstruction so program. Second. I couldn't read that fast enough, could I, Jeannie? So. No. <laughs> motion it's by, already covered. <laughs> motion by Trustee Balmas. Second by Trustee O'Brien. Uh, roll call, please. Thorstenson. Yes. Woodside. Aye. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Six aye. I'm on to item number five. Approval of Ordinance 2023-21. Authorizing execution of a professional services agreement with IMEG for engineering services for the 2023 construction season. So moved. Motion second. by Trustee Ross, second by Trustee Balmas. Roll call, please. Thorstenson. Yes. Woodside. Aye. Ross. Aye. 
Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Balmos? Aye. Six aye. Motion carries. Item number six, approval of ordinance 2023. Uh, 22. Excuse, sorry. Uh, amending the Gurney Municipal Code, Chapter 6, Section 6, 53, 55, and Chapter 32. <clears throat> section 32 to add a new Class 16 liquor license to permit sales of beer and wine at fuel stations with convenience stores and commercial kitchen. So actually just for clarification purposes for tonight, uh, this is only with regard to the uh, ordinance. Uh, this, uh, currently there's no uh, application for a liquor license that's been filed with the Village of Gurney, though we're aware of businesses that are interested in requesting uh, liquor licenses. There aren't any on file, so tonight there will be no vote with regard to specific licenses. This will be with reference to whether or not the Village would adopt a new uh, class of liquor license with the restrictions that are uh, being proposed that we've talked about over the last uh, several weeks. So. Sure, so yeah. I'll walk through a quick uh, PowerPoint <clears throat> here. Maybe, yes, okay. Uh, so just background, as the mayor said, this was discussed at the January uh, 30th committee of the whole meeting. Um, the police department and then our management analyst, Jody Luca, uh, reached out to surrounding communities to collect information as far as how they handle grocery or gas stations and convenience stores. Uh, this included 14 um, communities surveyed, uh, took that information, um, obviously worked with the police department to gather their input and then further refined it as time went on based on feedback um, from what we've seen from collecting survey results, uh, from staff's input, from uh, elected officials' input. Um, that's where we ended up uh, today with the ordinance. So eligibility, so uh, fuel stations with a convenience store, commercial kitchen, uh, net less than 4,000 uh, square feet above ground, uh, devoted to the use of a fuel station with a convenience store and commercial kitchen. Commercial kitchen is defined in the ordinance. Uh, commercial preparation, production, cooking of food. I have to have commercial equipment in there. Uh, so you can't get away with just a microwave or a hot dog roller or something that's, uh, you know, just keeping pizza warm. That does not count as a commercial kitchen. Uh, based on these requirements, having both the square footage and the commercial kitchen designation with the fuel and convenience. Currently two stations in the village are eligible. Uh, the BP at Washington and Hunt Club, the Speedway at Grand and Dillies, and then one potential future station that's in for a building permit uh, may be eligible, um, and that's the KC's at Hunt Club and Gages if that moves forward. The regulations uh, that have been proposed in the ordinance, uh, sales from nine to nine, Beer and wine only, as far as the quantities, beer cannot be sold anything less than a four pack, wine not less than 350 milliliter, uh, no exterior advertising, so no signs in the windows, no neon signs, paper signs, any of that stuff. Um, they have uh, the choice between a walk-in cooler or shelf display, not bold, so it's only one. Uh, so walk-in cooler is limited to 300 square feet maximum, always has to be locked. Um, as was discussed at the January 30th committee of the whole meeting, the police department talked about some access technology that kept it locked all the time. It could only be open when an ID was scanned um, that showed it was um, an ID for uh, somebody over 21 years old. Uh, so that's been incorporated in the ordinance. Uh, there's a requirement for signage as far as no one allowed under 21 in there. Uh, has to have one interior window that allows a clerk uh, to monitor and see in there, uh, no exterior windows. As it relates to the shelf display, uh, limited to six doors, not totaling uh, 20 contiguous linear feet. Again, always locked. The electronic ID scanning technology to get it open. Same signage uh, located in the rear half of the store, visible to the clerk uh, with both of them. So scanning the ID to uh, access the alcohol, step one. Um, there must also be point of sale equipment that scans the ID uh, when the customer takes it up to the clerk. So. Uh, scanning the ID to verify the age twice. Um, and based off the results of the survey that we looked at, these are the most restrictive re uh, regulations of any of the communities that we talked to. So uh, pretty clamped down from that perspective based off of, again, um, police department recommendations and then uh, feedback that we received throughout the past uh, month. So that is a summary of the ordinance before you tonight. So just for our approach, just a few comments on the front end from my end, this has uh, generated a lot of interest. And um, from my perspective, uh, trying to uh, 
come up with what I call a development tool that, um, as I said tonight, uh, just generates or puts together that tool uh, that it doesn't grant a license to anybody that the village board could choose to not use the tool ever uh, or it could choose to, to use the tool as they find appropriate. Um, so uh, that's important for everybody to know tonight. The um, restrictions that have been placed on this license, that one person had a comment to me to say, you guys must be really be concerned about this if you're putting all these restrictions on the license. And I think from my perspective, it was trying to be responsive to not only uh, staff and to trustees, uh, but also to residents that have had concerns about certain things. Um, the length of time, the 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. that was changed, the uh, no ads, um, I didn't see that on the front end, but I think there was a specific comment from a resident that came out to say they didn't like the way the Vernon Hills one looked uh, and with the, I think, beer piled on the floor, um, whatever the issues were, um, but just didn't have a good curb appeal. And I think that the response of no ads and all of the alcohol has to be inside of a cooler locked, it can't be on the ground, can't be available for display. Uh, as far as the size, there was a concern about it not becoming a liquor store. So uh, it's the most heavily restricted um, uh, community as far as the amount of uh, beer and wine that could be sold inside the uh, convenience store. Um, and I think just a reminder that from my perspective as the liquor commissioner is that uh, a liquor license is a privilege. Uh, it's not a right. Uh, it's something that we as a village board uh, would decide whether or not it's granted based on in each individual case. It's not something that if the, this particular classification is granted or created tonight, that we are then locked into doing, um, granting these licenses left and right. In fact, uh, the additions of like the commercial kitchen and some other things were added just to make sure we weren't put in that situation in part. And also from the village's perspective of tying uh, beer and wine to the sale of food has been something we've done in the past. So trying to be convenient or trying to be um, consistent. Uh, also, just the concern about the uh, juvenile access. Uh, I think by far, I, I don't know that there's one locally um, that has this driver's license reader. I know that uh, Chief saw it out on the East Coast and I think that's how it all started. Um, but we checked into it that it's available so that juveniles aren't, will not have a, um, their access uh, to uh, the coolers. And again, um, as I read through these, I know in town uh, certainly uh, very few of these restrictions are in existence for any of our other um, beer and wine distributors. Uh, however, we're just trying to be mindful of what some of the uh, commentary was and knowing that's a change for us wanting to place restrictions on here that we can all feel comfortable with best I, we could. And there's just some people that just won't feel comfortable with it at all, and I understand that. And uh, we live in a democratic society, and um, we get an opportunity to have our vote, and, and that's uh, what you have as a village board, people from different backgrounds that have their ability to do that. So I appreciate all the conversations that we've had over the last several months. Uh, and whether it's individually with board members or with residents that have talked to me, and it's been um, positive and negative. Obviously, the Wentworth folks have been 100% negative, um, and across the village, uh, oddly enough, it's been either I don't care or positive. So um, it's been an interesting uh, process, but tough. I guess, to go through that. So at this point, I think what I'd like to do is I know that for the board members, that each of the board members or some of the board members have comments or questions or some discussion that they'd like to have and maybe they'd ask staff. So um, if I just would open that up to my right and um, Trustee Ross, we start with you. Okay. Um. I don't like change and I really haven't heard sufficient reasons to change our, our liquor ordinance. Gurney is a special place and we have many visitors and residents of our community understand that spending money in Gurney helps us not have a, a village property tax. <coughs> and so when businesses choose to come here because of what we offer, I don't like it when they ask us to change our rules for them. So Casey's is welcome to come here as long as the zoning allows it, <clears throat> just without the beer and wine, similar to what they do in Highland Park. 
Um, we support all of our small businesses in many ways with Gurney's Got It and help with upgrades and getting them through the pandemic. And I worry that this new ordinance would put some of those businesses out of, out of business. There's plenty of places to buy beer and wine in Gurney, and I'm not convinced that we need it at gas stations. And as I haven't heard the positive comments. Mine was uh, only a few residents have said that they are okay with it, but the majority of Gurney residents have, um, in our um, emails and, and at our meetings have expressed strong objection. And so once we open it up, we won't be able to take it back. So for that reason, I'm a no vote. Thanks, Cheryl. On to Trustee Parsonson. So I guess I have a question based upon earlier discussion with you. Are we staying with the 300 square foot uh, space with the uh, 20 linear feet. Right. So I think that <coughs> what I understood from you is you'd like to see it at 275 square feet and four doors or like six. <coughs> is that correct? Yeah. To me, six just seems excessive. Six doors as it's written presently. And I appreciate that our staff team researched that with other municipalities and that this six was deemed to be restrictive compared to them. But um, I, I think that it's just hard visually when we're calculating the square footage based upon the external perimeter. And then when you walk inside and you might have, I'll say a men's room, a ladies room, a kitchen and a, um, you know, a storage room, suddenly that's shrunk down and that those six coolers just to me seems very, very, uh, large or excessive. So when the first motion comes through it, either if the motion comes through and it has the original restrictions on it, the motion could be amended to go to that, or the original motion has those the 16 linear feet and the 275 square feet, then we don't have to amend the motion. So either way, you could have the motion voted on at, the, at those restrictions, if that's what you'd like. Okay. Um, so I guess just a couple of other points. So I um, appreciate the prudent controls that our police brought to our attention with the cooler locks. I also appreciate the no external advertising because I think that would potentially prompt somebody that we wouldn't want to to make a quick right turn and, and want to shop there just for that versus the fact that it'd be for other convenience store benefits. Um, I'm really glad that this would give Gurney the uh, ability to redevelop the Avalon property that was uh, we haven't been able to do. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll continue to be able to use this for certain parts of town where it's prudent, but not all parts of town and not all businesses. And um, you did a good job clarifying, so I don't really have a question, but Thank you for clarifying that a business can only get a license if we approve them separately and present it to the board. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Trustee Parsonson. Trustee O'Brien. Oh, wow. There's been a lot to this. I do have one quick question. If we do happen to deny, um, if we do happen to deny uh, giving a license to to somebody in the future, um, this maybe is more for Attorney Winter. Is there a potential for lawsuit if we say yes to one, but no to another? Well, right now, uh, <coughs> this would provide for it, but there are zero licenses available for the state classification. So historically, what the village has done is it's a, uh, a proper application. Uh, uh, the amendment has been advanced to increase the number of licenses available. That is good practice. That, that I understand, but what if we choose to increase the number of licenses for one place and then another one comes along and then we say, no, we don't want to for that one? Well, presumably the reason for saying no is you know, it, it would not qualify. I mean, uh, it, you know, it's, it's best to have objective measurements of that. And so <coughs> I can't answer that in the abstract, but right now it's zero. So if the mayor is correct that uh, somebody would have to Some 
villages have a strict hard limit as to the total number, and they only occasionally will increase that number. They might have a waiting list being maintained during that time period. But I can tell you historically, uh, uh, Jeremy, if the applicant uh, qualifies, it has been raised in the uh, practice, uh, then she bring that as a motion uh, for approval. Very helpful. Thank you. Sorry to come back on this one, Ben. So XYZ company or gas station that we that we would think we do not need a liquor license on at a particular part of town. I'm gonna to say it that way, whether it's one by six flags or one in an area that we may have enough liquor stores. If they qualify, those are it sounds like we're going to bring it to the for decision in an objective criteria that they qualify but then they would come here and our decisioning might not be objective correct well i mean uh, you would be i mean uh, the standard that you would apply would be that and that's what i would tell you so you don't want to unreasonably or capriciously deny a petition if it's been <coughs> I think a more that Karen would say is that as she sits here as a decision maker that her decisions <coughs> are her own that as long as she could defend them um, and when you're saying what's uh, an objective for somebody you know that's objective for you it's objective for me it's there isn't like one hard standard to say it has to go a certain way yeah I mean I guess the, my response would be if you add this as a potential license you should be prepared to issue those licenses there may be some where an application isn't uh, satisfactory, but um, adding this classification does invite the application to be made under under this new uh, class 16. So I have a question. If we do that, and then someone comes in who's qualified, and we deny that, then won't they have grounds to take us to court? Well, I mean, there are a lot of variables. Basically, uh, uh, I mean, there is a uh, legal action uh, that, you know, it's, it's impossible for me to say that we're insulated from litigation. There's many, there's many um, factors that go into that consideration. I mean, obviously, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's hard to give a, a general response to that particular question. It's going to always be I know we're monopolizing over on this side. Sorry, other trustees. Um, I just wanted to thank Mayor Hood for um, at least doing what he, you could to make this the most uh, palatable as possible for, for a potential, and I'm not sure where I'm gonna vote yet, but the fact that we've got the most restrictive uh, locking mechanism in, I think, Northern Illinois is fantastic, the hours. so. Either way, whatever way the vote goes, I'd like to thank you for all of your efforts in um, trying to appease as many people as possible. To my left. Any comments to my left for Trustee Woodside? You know, I, I just want to say thank you to the mayor for the work that you have done and, and to the staff as well for all the work that's gone into this, um, trying to weigh the economic development benefits of a change like this and hearing all of the feedback from the community and from the trustees sitting here and, and, the, and the input from staff just points out how many voices and how many different perspectives can come to something like this. We have always historically been very slow to change when it comes to issues of alcohol or gaming or any number of issues that we have taken through the lens of the kind of community that we want to be. Um, so a change like this is not a small matter. Um, 
but I do appreciate all of the effort that has gone into uh, presenting the issues that are concerns and the efforts to address those concerns in the ordinance that's presented. And again, I think however this vote turns out today, that has been well worth the effort and, uh, and for the folks from the neighborhood that are, that are passionate about this, your voices have certainly been heard. I would just echo some of what Trustee Woodside has already said. I would have to say that this has been a very tough decision and it is very difficult. We have had to weigh both sides of the issue, the pros and the cons, and look at it as, as many angles. We have all read all the documents that has been submitted to us, all the signatures, all the emails. We have looked at them all and have based our, just whatever the outcome has been fairly looked at as in as many ways as possible. And I appreciate the many efforts that have been given towards this issue. I would also like to maybe just add um, that since the community wants more things or entertainment and that that maybe maybe some consideration could be given you know some of the consideration is that we're not in any great financial issues right now but i think it might be if this passes that we maybe consider designating maybe uh, however we can that some of the money that comes from the sale or the license be designated towards events that could be funded through the village, whether it be a neighborhood event or something that the community as a whole could participate in. And that would help maybe in some ways help um, view this in a, in a better light. Just throwing that out there. But thank you to all for their many efforts. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, Trustee Garner. This is a difficult decision, as we've all said. Um, but as Dr. Maycheck uh, alluded to, we had, Gurney is a special place. And people who have served on this board have worked really hard to create the culture that we have. And we're, you know, we're not like other communities. We're slow to go in terms of change. And I think that's a good thing and has lots of value. Um, because we stand apart. And we've always been very tight on, on uh, you know, X-rated video stores, strip clubs, tattoo stores, uh, establishments, and alcohol, and you can even say, you know, marijuana dispensaries, those things. Um, my worry is that we begin to mirror other communities. We don't have uh, freestanding liquor stores for the most part. Um, we have one that's been grandfathered in. Um, and I don't understand why we would even want to uh, approach that direction. Um, Gurney is financially sound. We don't have a financial reason for doing it, although, you know, I'm not against additional revenue. Um, but I just think that once you go there, you can't take it back. Um, and adding uh, these commercial gas stations that uh, supply alcohol to the public, um, I think they're just another form of freestanding liquor stores. And I think you begin to mirror other communities that you don't want to be like. Uh, that's a real concern for me. I got nothing against, um, you know, beer and wine. Um, every now and then, I'll enjoy, you know, a drink. But 
um, I do have something against, you know, communities that are, are, are not doing well. I do have a problem with us wanting to be like them or mirror them. So I'm really concerned about this. Is it, is it going to be a, break, a, a make or break deal for Gurney? I don't think so. If we pass it, I think we inherit whatever problems come from it, and we have to deal with that, you know, uh, forever. But um, I think if we don't do it, uh, you know, we're in a better position, a stronger position, uh, such that if we ever need it in the future, it's a feather in our cap. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it is, a, I respect everybody's decision on this and, and my hope is that, um, we'll remain, uh, a set apart community and a beacon of light for other communities. Thanks, Craig. <clears throat> well, Greg, you're the only one to get applause, so there you go. Will it grow hair? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Mayor, can I ask a one more? Sure, Trustee Thorstenson. So I guess I was surprised that uh, what Brian was saying, potentially, if we don't have those objective rules already defined. So have you? did you consider adding any additional objective requirements to the ordinance that would allow us to have more judgment on the establishments? something in mind so well, the only thing I could think of and I don't know if because I didn't do any analysis I thought we were going to be in a better position on that one but is based upon the um, the establishments proximity in terms of saturation to other available liquor sales so maybe that's a complex statement but what I mean by that is if um, you know We've got an area of town that has all the uh, grocery stores and they all sell alcohol. What's the proximity of that to another gas station in that area that uh, we could say that uh, it precludes us from needing another gas station selling liquor in that proximity? The only thing I would say So as a lawyer, obviously, I don't mean to go sideways from our own counsel, but from my perspective, I guess, is um, kind of what we were talking about in terms of what's objective, kind of the things you just mentioned. Um, to me, would be there'd be an objective nature to that, and it doesn't necessarily have to be spelled out uh, necessarily in the ordinance itself. Uh, and my experience, anyway, is I, maybe mark me if I'm wrong, Brian, is I haven't seen a lawsuit of a company that was denied a liquor license. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but um, seems unlikely that that would happen. But I, I would agree with Brian in saying that there's no way that we could ever make that blanket statement that we will never get sued for anything. We would get sued for not walking across the street the right way. So I wouldn't want to give you that, that feeling. But at the same time, do I think it's likely that if we turn someone down for a liquor license that we'd get sued for that? I think it seems highly unlikely to me. I mean, I would agree with you specifically on their cases and their two really recent decisions. You know, uh, people that want to build buildings don't want to be suing the village that they're that they want to build. But the question was presented to me: Is it possible? And I just, you know, you can't give a blanket statement um, that it would be impossible. Okay, so one more, um, because I, I didn't want to call them out, but the gas station that is adjacent to the highway 
and adjacent to Six Flags has had some crime, could we put an objective statement in the requirements that they would uh, have be a business that had repetitive crime or incidents? You want to take that one for me? <laughs> That's been a subjective. I mean, we've done that a little bit, as you know, with the, the hotel licensing. Uh, and again, um, it would be an objective standard whether certain occurrences were related to the alcohol sales. Um, but as you can see, this is really a double identification process here. We want to be able to have access to the uh, product, and then two, to actually buy it. So, uh, you know, every attempt has been made to make this So since Trustee Thorsonson went there, you can have as many locks as you want on these containers. But if somebody comes in with a gun, you have, you know, and that if there's crime and there's a way to avoid that, this is available because it's convenient. I just think that's something our police department should have to deal with. I don't know if there's been a tie between higher crime and beer and wire, beer and wine sales. I don't know that that's the case, but I get what your statement is. Yeah. All right. Um, any comments to my left? Yeah, I, I just think that I mean we don't. You can buy alcohol in Gurney, so I don't. I don't get why we have to. Ha we have to have additional places to purchase I mean it's you can get it and every place that we're talking about placing uh, a facility that sells alcohol there's another one just down the street um, and and we're the most restrictive it sounds to me this feels like we're we're trying to force a square block in a round hole is the way it feels to me. I mean, we're working really hard to make this make sense. And it just feels like, well, maybe we shouldn't do it, is, is how it feels. Um, uh, you know, again, it's not, it's not a revenue issue that we need. Um, there is access pretty much equally across town you know, I, I'm having a problem understanding why we got to have this. Okay. It sounds like it's more to the benefit of the petitioner than it is for the benefit of the residents. And, you know, we represent the residents, you know, more so than the petitioners. I mean, it, you know, whatever we approve has, to, in my opinion, has, should it, it anyway benefit the people who live in Gurney. Um, I don't want to be the most restrictive town that sells alcohol. I mean, I'd rather not sell alcohol, but it's still available to those who want it. So I don't, I don't, it, it feels like we really don't have a problem, but you know, Thanks, Greg. Thanks. Anybody else have uh, comments or questions? So I, to start off with, if we use the motion with the reduced square footage so we don't have to go through the amendment process, is everybody okay with the 275 square footage and the four cooler doors so we start at that place? <coughs> is that okay or do you want? So then there's a motion. Um, there'll be a motion in the positive. Yeah, so and then you go ahead, Brian, if you could explain yeah, so, that. I mean, if, if uh, based on that comment, the motion should always, when we um, propose uh, an ordinance or an application, we always place it in the affirmative. Okay, so if you're opposed to it, you can vote no, but um, it's in the affirmative. But if uh, uh, it is possible to amend this to read that the cooler cannot exceed 275. 
five square feet, and that in the alternative, if they wanted to have the shelf display, that it could only be four doors at 16 linear feet. I come up with 14. Okay, 14 linear feet. So that's a, that's a possible amendment uh, that you can make as the initial motion. Well, if, you know, and someone will have to make a motion tonight. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we start there? Is there a motion? I, mo I motion to approve uh, with um, the amendment making the total cooler space not to exceed 275 square feet, or uh, if they're going with cooler doors, no more than four cooler doors with 14 linear feet. There's a motion, and is there a second? So moved. Motion by Trustee Turner. Second by Trustee Balmas. That was. And you got Trustee O'Brien as the initial. Right. Uh, so, roll call, please. Thorstenson. Yes. Woodside. Yes. Ross. No. Garner. No. O'Brien. No. Balmas. Yes. Hood. Yes. Four, three. Motion carries. All right. So again, as I've said, this is strictly for the ordinance only. It does not provide a license for any uh, entity that would be taken, provided the entity was to request uh, a license. We'd go through that process and it would be presented to the board. So on to public comment. Anybody that would like to make a public comment, if you'd like to step to the microphone, state uh, your name, uh, and we will listen. Keith Owens, 6464 Doral Drive, Gurney. Uh, I've learned quite a bit tonight that I didn't know before. First, I learned that it's possible that people on the board can actually vote no. And I appreciate all your votes, but particularly those who uh, took into consideration the fact that uh, this is the KC station, and this applies to any place where you're going to grant a license. And I know this goes to the approval process in the future. But the, the KC station is the only one that's even remotely close to a residential neighborhood as the four that are, are potentially on, or, or could be getting this license. So when somebody says, I hear a lot of negative from the people who live in Wentworth and only positive from other places, that's probably because that we're the only neighborhood that's going to be impacted by this. So I hope you take that into consideration when it comes before you. And I find it very interesting that the, uh, the Illinois Liquor uh, Control Commission publishes a handbook that gives guidance to liquor commissioners. And in that handbook, it has objective restrictions, one of which I've pointed out to this board numerous times, which is they recommend, not require, but they recommend that liquor licenses not be available to institutions within 100 feet of senior centers, nursing homes, and schools. And as you know, and I know for sure because I measured it, this is within 100 feet. So when you say this is the most restrictive, that's not true. This is the one that benefits the businesses the most. And actually, that this is the most restrictive is false also. The most restrictive is not allowing them. And I thank Greg for pointing that out. Sorry for using the familiar there, trustee. All right. Why are we measuring ourselves against other communities? Never once during this process, except with the, with the comments that were made by some board members tonight, did I hear anybody say anything other than, how can we do this? Not once have I heard anyone say, why should we be doing this? Until it was brought up tonight. Thank you again very much. This is a community 
that's built on values that, that weigh the business and the, and the residents. That scale has been tipped out of balance as far as I'm concerned with this. All right? Three to three is the trustee's vote and the tie is broken by the mayor. Okay? I would like everybody in this village to remember that, both now and in the future. Thank you. Somebody else like to make a comment? Adrian Doherty, 901 Clark Drive. Uh, Gurney, thank you so much for all the time and effort and deliberation and patience and forbearance you've allowed for this process. Really grateful for that. But just so you know, going forward, it's blatant the way the board, certain members of the board, have done a two-step. I mean, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to see that you have an agenda and you were gonna get there any way you could. But just so you know, going forward, we will have a granule, granular eye on the stats of what accidents are caused, what crime is caused, and what neighborhoods, and what they're related to. We'll be all over it, and you will hear about it, and there will be a website. Thank you so much. All right, at this time, public comments closed. Uh, I just would like to just have one comment just about my fellow trustees, whether they voted yes or no. Uh, I would just say that the, the amount of deliberation, just as I've heard from them, uh, I'm appreciative uh, of the hard work uh, that we not only do on this subject, but on many, many subjects. And as you can see, it's not, um, not a rubber stamp group by a long shot. So uh, I appreciate uh, all your comments and uh, the way you've addressed the situation today. And again, this is the formation of an ordinance that has no impact on, uh, at least from my perspective, the uh, licenses that may or may not be issued in the future. So at this point, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. By Trustee Balmas, second by Trustee O'Brien. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries.